Hi everyone, it is April 23rd, 2019. I'm going to play just a few minutes of this video and then another video and I'm going to ask Christians why are you not outraged at the evil inside those who proclaim to be Christian. Now, I know a lot of you are already rolling your eyes. Oh my God, she's harping on the Christians again. If you have been inundated with Christian hate, Christian judgment, and so many Christians, it's the Jews, it's the Jews, it's the Jews, uh, scapegoating an entire group of people and they will never ever reevaluate their beliefs, their thoughts, then you do get really angry, frustrated. I want to thank all, all of you, all of the Christians that have emailed me and left comments underneath my videos getting you're actually listening to another human being. You get that I am not. I am not bashing Christians. I am not. Uh, recently I've gotten these comments how I am mocking Jesus Christ. I am not. I can distinguish between the Christian hypocrite and Jesus. Two very different. Two very different individuals. I don't care whether Jesus is a myth or real. It doesn't. I, I there are there's plenty of evidence that suggests that Jesus was a composite character uh, made up by the Roman propagandists. But I don't care. There is no other example out there uh, of a life that is no better example of a life worthy of trying to emulate, trying to emulate. Oh my God, I say, I just say that and people say, people are not perfect. Are you not hearing me? I am saying you try, you try. You now I get these comments and it's unbelievable and they come in every day. And yes, you do begin to understand the difficulty that we have in uh, getting this country on a healthy track, uh, on a moral track. You know, look, it's the Jews, it's the Jews. I, I, I'm like, oh my God. It's the Jews who are perverts. And yet, we have this. Thousands of Boy Scout leaders face new child sex allegations, names expected to be released Tuesday. The Boy Scouts. When I was living in Williamsburg, Massachusetts, I rented a home by a man who, uh, his father was the leader of the Boy Scouts, and right next door to the house that I rented was this dilapidated Boy Scout hut. And a neighbor had told me that his father had sexually abused children in that hut. Okay, they were Christian. How many priests sexually abused children? How is it that Christians can claim that it's the Jews who are perverts? I am so done with this. Eight years. Yeah, I have lost my patience and I have recognized that we will get nowhere, nowhere good when you have so many who refuse to do any work on their own thought processes their beliefs that they believe to be the truth when it's simply a belief. I have never... Uh, look, Christians, 
that whole group, I don't care the, the, all the denominations and all the different interpretations of the Bible, Christians. No other group is more hateful, more judgmental, more arrogant, more stuck up on their being a Christian. Oh, boy, am I going to get slammed for this. I don't care. But I want to thank each and every one of you who has said, you don't hear me bashing Christians. You do hear what I am saying. It is the hypocrisy that is in so many Christians. They don't even bother to try to clean up their own life. The interpretations that you have, oh my God, of that Bible. Well, one thing is clear in that Bible. Lying is an abomination, and I have yet to meet, meet in real life, a Christian who does not lie. Lie about other people, lie to people, and claim that they are Christian. And have I ever met one that has taken responsibility for those lies and tried to understand why it is that they lie so that they don't lie again because in that Bible it does say go I will forgive you of your sins go and sin no more that means you have to do work on yourself to sin no more oh but Carol people aren't perfect and Jesus died for our sins on that cross and uh, we're all sinners and but we're all going to heaven anyway but it's a narrow road you can't get very many Christians who will talk about that. No, they throw out their quotes and that's it. But they never, ever really engage in deep conversation about, hmm, narrow road. What does that mean? Very few are on it. Well, what makes me believe that I am on it? Or that, you know, uh, go and sin no more. I will forgive you of your sins. Go and sin no more. How many Christians have entered into that conversation that I started in a video? None. So, look, you can call yourself whatever it is that you want, but you get to define your life by how you live your life. So whatever it is that you claim you are, your life demonstrates who you are. How you live, what you say, what you do, your fruits. And I will say, huh, the majority, your fruits? Well, let's just say you're producing a lot of rotten fruit. And if any of you would do some work on yourselves, you could produce something far better. Yeah. So, what do we have? We've got this guy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm this great Christian. Who, who commits so much evil all over the world? Suffering? of innocent people, sentient beings? Why is there not any outrage? Why do we not hear outrage from the Christian community that this guy claims to be a Christian? No, silence. Oh, I think because a lot of you feel that you've just got to be nice and pretend that you are loving individuals. Yes, you have that pretense that affect that you put out into the world. It's called a mask. It's called a pretense. It's not real. I get comments from, from people who, who claim that Jesus, Jesus believed in neutrality. No, Jesus was a revolutionary. Jesus fought against the uh, corruption of the soul of governments but most Christians, they just lay back. They lay back and they're waiting for that rapture. They're waiting to die so that they can live in eternal bliss. I am sick of it. 
I'm sick of the delusion. And for those who have left comments saying, you know, don't, oh, I'm so sorry that you're bitter and that your bitterness has, um, uh, it's uh, my bitterness about Jesus Christ. I have no bitterness about Jesus Christ. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not bitter. I just, I, I'm inundated, inundated with people who do not know how to think properly. Inundated with the hatred from Christians and the judgment from Christians as they go about saying, we're not to judge people. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Cast the moat out of your own eye before you start judging other people and throwing that moat or whatever. <laughs> it's amazing to me. If you could just get real, maybe, maybe the individual ripple effect of just getting real, it would have a profound positive effect. But no, you're just going to sit back, do nothing, live your own delusion. Hey, I'm a Christian and I know the truth. Everybody who is not a Christian, they don't know the truth. Your arrogance is sickening at this point. Yes, I am angry. I live in Christian territory and I see how mean and hypocritical people are every single day. And they don't care what they do to other people's lives. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and we've got this guy, it's staring us in the face that something is very wrong with the Christian community when you can listen to this guy. Life so far includes a growing list of accomplishments. Eagle Scout, first in his class at West Point, Harvard Law, Congress, and the first American to ever hold the top jobs at both the CIA and the State Department. His number one on the list remains a faithful decision, though, made back in college. Can you take me back to West Point? Uh, I, I know there was a, a time in your life where there was a decision point for you uh, about just, you know, following Christ. So I grew up uh, going to church on Sundays, uh, but frankly, it wasn't a priority in my life uh, uh, growing up. I, I went up to West Point, and as a young cadet during my freshman year, there were two uh, young men who were juniors who were true men of faith. Uh, they held these uh, little uh, uh, Bible studies slash uh, cookie clatches on Sunday afternoons. Uh, and they invited all the cadets to come see it. It was purely voluntary, and I started showing up, and truly remarkable. I started going to church every weekend on my own because I wanted to be there to learn and to grow. Uh, and uh, at some point during that first year, I really did come to have an understanding of Jesus that was different than the one that I had before, and it fundamentally changed my life. That life is... Yeah, fundamentally changed my life. To what? To be evil to actually commit torture, to cause so much suffering all over the world. Ah, but I'm Christian, and I believe in Jesus Christ. And, well, to the other people who do not, who actually live principles very, uh, very much in line with Christianity, but they don't proclaim themselves Christian, well, they're going to hell, and they don't know the truth. And they're bad people. I'm sick of it. When I was a cadet, what's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, and stole. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, lie and cheat and steal. And oh, don't bother with the consequences of those actions. <laughs> yeah, a great Christian. You know, look, when you have lived the consequences of Christians in your own life. When you have seen and even heard 
them lie about you to someone else. And they don't care at all what they have done. They will not even admit what they have done. They will simply obfuscate. Uh, they will, uh, they'll just start talking about something else. Literally. They cannot confront their own sins. And yet they know. Jesus said, I will forgive you of your sins. Go and sin no more. Which means that one has to admit to themselves their sins, however they manifest, and not do it again. Hey, what an idea. Oh, but it's not possible. It's not possible to change oneself. And Carol, look, we're on the planet that is controlled by Satan. And so, so what? So what does that mean in your own life? You want to know why we're so steeped in evil? Because so many Christians are right there with it. Living their satanic life, living a pretense, a lie, lying about who they are, lying about other people, and ha ha ha, let's laugh about it. Let's laugh about it. And let's never ever think about the consequences of our behavior on other people. So we will betray and we will lie and we will cheat and we will steal. But we'll call ourselves Christians. And that is the majority of Christians. Why don't you clean up your own group before attacking other groups, claiming that every Jew, every Jew, they're perverts, they're liars. Oh my God, how many comments do I get about Jews being liars? I grew up in a Jewish area of New York, predominantly Jewish. Most of my close friends were Jews. Guess what? They were far more honest personally than any Christian I ever knew in my real life. So I've got to distinguish between the cyber world and real world because I have subscribers that I have a cyber relationship with and then a telephone relationship with and I talk to them and they are Christians. I am not talking about them. I'm talking about the Christians in real life that I have known that have been close friends to me, close friends to me, and no one, no Jew has ever betrayed me, hurt me, like my Christian friends. And Jews do have an ability to stand accountable far greater than any Christian I have known. Now, I said Jews are far more personally honest. You know where you stand. They don't do all of that bullshit. Oh, I'm just so nice and everything, and I've got to be nice. And they don't engage in these manipulations. They speak directly, and you do know where you stand because they, they don't fear being honest with those that they engage in a relationship with. And uh, remarkably, I've had experiences with Jews that, you know, misperceived something or believed something, and this is in regards to me, and blamed me for something that I did not do. And when they finally got that while they were wrong, they came back, faced me, and said, I am so sorry. I didn't, I, I blamed you, you know, when you were not at fault. No Christian has ever done that to me. None. So, I'm done with this Jew thing. I am done with Christians 
they're, you know, walking around thinking that their shit don't stink. And I'm not talking about every Christian because I have said repeatedly, I have great respect for those Christians who try to emulate the life of Christ. Because that's what your job is as a Christian. You don't just get to put a label on yourself and then just engage in your satanic lifestyle, your satanic behavior, and claim that you are a Christian. And I am sick of Christians using Jesus in that way. And so would Christ be. No outrage from the Christian community. Do you realize that this guy represents an example of a Christian? Do you understand that how you live your life has a ripple effect into the greater community? Every Christian should be calling out Christians for their hypocrisy, for their continued sinning, for their delusional beliefs. Every Christian should be calling them out. The amount of evil that this guy commits on a daily basis is so sickening. It's so disturbing. And yes, Jesus would be calling him out. You know, more sanctions put on Venezuela and Cuba and Nicaragua. John Bolton, Trump, and Mike Pompeo. And, yeah, the puppets that we install. We call people dictators. And yes, I'm going to say we. Because it's an American thing, the arrogance, the, the psychopathic behavior, which has filtered down into the masses, into our population, and a lot of Christians have that psychopathic behavior. And then there are going to be people who are going to say, oh, I am just such an angry person and I'm bitter and I, oh, and I love the comments from people who claim that uh, because of my, what has happened to me personally, um, that is, you know, uh, I carry it over. The, the, first of all, the personal and the collective, the, there's a connection there. Um, but no, I'm not carrying over anything from or projecting on to what we are living just because I happen to come from a very sick, severe, pathologically narcissistic family. What happened is I got clear about evil. Yeah, I see it. I see it taking place all over the place. I see narcissistic tendencies in Americans. I see them in Christians. I see it, how they begin to point the finger and project their own moral failings onto other people because they will not take a look at themselves. They will not bother to ever admit I was wrong. You want, you want to claim that you are a Christian, but you never admit that you're wrong. Wow. Okay. So, Ecuador, we have our puppet installed. And this guy got a lot of money. So, what does this have to do with Venezuela? It has to do with installing puppets into positions of power in countries to get them to do our evil bidding. But it's the Jews. It's only the Jews. 
It's only the Jews, Carol, that are evil. And then I get comments, no joke. Mike Pompeo isn't a Christian. Wow, okay. Well, a lot of you Christians are not Christians. You just like that label slapped on your forehead. And the unbelievable evil that is committed by Christians seems to be something that Christians like to ignore or justify it. Well, it's all coming from the Jews. Too bad. You were 98% of the population. You're still a huge percentage of the population. And you've all been manipulated by the Jews. Oh, I guess you didn't have that moral core within your own self. Strong enough not to be manipulated by all of those. All of those. Well, no way. A tiny segment of the population. You all got manipulated by the Jews. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced earlier today that waivers, which allowed eight countries to import Iranian crude oil without being subject to U.S. sanctions, would expire on May 2nd without extension. The eight countries include China, India, Turkey, South Korea, Japan, Greece, Italy, Taiwan, U.S. Hey, we are the moral superior country, so we get to force other countries to accept our diktats, not even our laws. Trump comes out. Sanctions on Iran. And if you countries don't follow what we want you to do, which is stop engaging in trade with Iran, we're going to come after you. Ah, the great Christian nation, the United States. Well, all of this is, well, we're living. All of this arrogance, all of our evil, all of our refusal to really um, get to the truth of who we are as a people, because we don't have any clue who we are as a people, um, this manifests. What we're living, the darkness, the evil that is destroying lives on a daily basis, then I have those Christians who say, oh, I'm so happy because it only means that the prophecies are being fulfilled and eventually Jesus is going to come back and he's going to turn all the evil good again and we're going to be raptured up and live eternal bliss. Well, why don't you forget about that and think about, focus on what you are doing today. Because you know what? Jesus would be helping all of those in need. Ah, right. And yet, we have more and more in need every single day. And we've got these Christians all over. And they don't seem to be doing much. Wow. Okay, well, I guess it's the Jews. It's the Jews that make Christians hypocrites. I guess it's the Jews that have made Christians wear a mask and lie and lie and lie and betray other people and then they walk off and they live their life and they're fine because they don't have to suffer the consequences of their own behavior. Other people do, but they are fine. They're Christian. And they've been manipulated by the Jews to behave just like that, really. So we've got these floods. It's, what, three weeks after these floods in Iran? And uh, disastrous floods, whoa, uh, hit 28 out of 31 province, provinces, provinces in Iran, affecting 10 million people. And if this happened in a European country, oh, mainstream media would be all over it. But do you hear anything about the disastrous floods? Floods of this magnitude are likely to have terrible long-term consequences for agricultural and other production, infrastructure, energy production, transport, and daily lives. 78 people died 
1,076 have been injured. 10 million Iranians have been affected. 2 million in direct need of assistance. But you know what we're doing. You know that humanitarian aid to Venezuela because we care so much about Venezuelans. And so many Americans don't want to get off that lie. What are we doing to these Iranians that are in desperate need of help? We slap them with more sanctions. <laughs> we slap them with more sanctions. <laughs> we lie, we cheat, we steal. We commit evil all over the world. Oh, but my life was transformed by Jesus Christ. Wow. That's it, Carol. Unsubbed. You mock Jesus. No, I mock ordinary Christians who are not Christians at all. At all. Who use Jesus Christ for their own purposes instead of doing the work necessary to put their own self secondary to the principles of Christianity. And the most important one, don't lie. Live honestly. Tell the truth. Can't find many of them. And yes, yeah, the, the you guys who emailed me, left comments, getting what I'm saying, you must be horrified at what, uh, what the Christian community reflects. I feel for you. But yes, I do thank you for your support because you get it. Now, I don't call myself a Christian, but I get angry at people using Jesus Christ, justifying, living their delusions, Never, ever, ever changing. No. Nope. They don't have to. Because they don't want to do that hard work. That, well, gets you to the narrow road. And it's funny to those that leave me comments claiming that I'm mocking Jesus Christ when I have used Jesus Christ as that example. And I keep my spirituality very, very simple. I focus on living as honestly as I can, speaking as honestly as I can. But you know, when I read that Bible a couple of years ago, and I, 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 wow, it hit me right in the face. Lying is an abomination. And you don't hear Christians talking about that. Well, if they did, they would have to confront their own lies. But instead, ha, <laughs> we lie, we cheat, we steal. We commit evil and it doesn't matter. We don't have to clean up our sins because we get to manipulate in our own brains what that Bible has said. Yes, lying is an abomination. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to continue lying. You know, people around the world are beginning to see us for what we are and who we are. Cruel, cruel, evil, cruel, evil, self-centered, uncaring, not loving. Oh, and then I get the comments. Ah, most people are good and decent. Bullshit. We would not be living this nightmare if most people were good and decent. Because good is demonstrated by how one lives. Not what what one speaks, how you live your life, what you do, not what you say. It's the actions that define who you are. The actions that you take 
defines you. And once you begin to do that work, you get out of your own sickness and disease and you recognize what a hypocrite you were and the care and compassion that you thought that you had. Well, <laughs> you got to do some work to get it to a genuine state. And once it gets genuine, you get to see the difference between who you claimed and who you thought you were to, okay, wow, very different. The care, compassion, and love, not the sentimental. Love for truth, wow, that becomes a force within you. And you can't sit back and just ignore all of the evil around you. You can't sit back and not speak out against the hypocrisy that you see on a daily basis. You cannot allow the lies to continue. Because there's a force inside you that, that continually says, you just, it's like, where does it come from? Well, it's God. And when you see the cruelty, whether it is on the national or international stage, whether it's in your local community, you can't just ignore it. We are being so cruel all over the world. And the cruelty of not helping the Iranian people who are so in need sanctions that we have placed more sanctions since this flood it's remarkable you know and here the secondary sanctions sanctions against other countries which do not adhere to US sanctions but continue to deal with Iran the US believes it seems that it can intimidate and financially punish countries, including NATO and EU, should they not adhere to U.S. laws on their own territory. Extraterritorial application of U.S. laws should, of course, be unacceptable for any other sovereign states, and it goes without saying that the U.S. would never accept foreign laws to be implemented on the territory on their territory, but the U.S. seems to believe that it is so exceptional that others should make exceptional decisions in favor of this exceptionality, unlawful, this exceptionally unlawful U.S. policy. Yes, we're exceptional. Few have noticed Iran won a case at the U.N. International Court of Justice in October last year. The ICJ ruled and ordered that the United States remove sanctions that target humanitarian trade, food, medicine, and civil aviation. Oh, but Carol, all of this stuff I don't care about. I just want to watch my TV show. This guy terminates a 1955 treaty with Iran. Put Iran's Revolutionary Guard on terrorist organizations, uh, the organization list. We are, we are, oh, but it's just the Jews, it's only Israel. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> uh, you want to live that delusion? Go right ahead. But you've put yourself on the side of evil, not good. The U.S., this Christian nation, mirrors the Zionist nation in their evil being committed. We commit just as much evil, so why don't you as an American focus on the evil committed here instead of saying, it's the Jews, it's the Jews. And they've manipulated, they have manipulated 98% of the population to do this. Can't you understand, Carol? No, because they didn't manipulate me. I had to do work. 
to find out who I was and to stand strong on my principles. Oh, <laughs> wow. So I'm not that easily manipulated anymore. Certainly not after my list last Christian relationship of which left me shell-shocked and I will be until the very moment before my death. Yes, I am shell-shocked. One doesn't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist to get the thought that we are here witnessing a brilliant piece of psychopolitical projection, projection of one's own dark sides on somebody else. And that's what Christians do individually. That's what they do as a group. And that's what our government does. I will link below. Yep, I'm tired of it. Every day, every friggin' day, it's the Jews. Wow. Yeah, Christians, huh. they don't commit evil. They're not. They're not. It's the Jewish Boy Scout leaders. It's the Jewish priests. Carol, those Gentiles that sexually abused you, they were Jewish. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs>